Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Sasha, the face of deception, announced her resignation from her position at the company's headquarters. Sasha resisted Brooke Lynn and Maxie's attempts to persuade her to change her mind. Before Brooke Lynn stormed out, Lucy and Brooke Lynn got into a fight. Lucy later inquired as to whether Sasha's resignation was solely due to Lucy. Lucy was reassured by Sasha that Lucy wasn't the reason behind her resignation. Lucy soon attempted to have Sasha stay at deception by using their contract as leverage. Lucy was reprimanded by Maxie, who remarked that Lucy had already caused enough harm. Lucy disregarded Maxie and persisted in asking Sasha to change her mind. Sasha remained unmoved, declaring that happiness had no monetary value. What the hell is wrong with you? After Sasha left, Maxie asked Lucy quite seriously. Lucy attempted to persuade Maxie to appoint Blaze as Sasha's replacement. Any action Lucy took, according to Maxie, would only last moment, because you don't qualify as a partner. You are a wrecking ball all by yourself. You don't ask my advice. You simply act however you choose, disregarding the opinions of others. Really, their lives are meaningless. What has it cost me to stay with you, do you know? Oh no, with a tone full of hate, Maxie remarked, I can't even look at you right now, and motioned for Lucy to go. Olivia fed Cody homemade food for lunch in the stables at the Quartermain estate. Their shared passion for Dante brought the two closer. Cody invited Olivia to come hang out with him. Beer in hand, Olivia and Cody shared affectionate anecdotes about Dante, including their teenage summer camp experiences. Olivia burst out laughing as she got ready to head back to the hospital. After thanking Olivia for lunch, Cody gave her a hug. Olivia joked to Cody as she was leaving that he should stop telling her tales of his and Dante's camp days. Sasha joined Cody shortly after to inform him that she had left deception. Is Sasha sure she made the correct choice? Cody inquired. Sasha declared she was sick of obsessing over her appearance for the cameras. Cody inquired as to Sasha's financial situation. Sasha promised to resolve the issue. Cody, Sasha remembered, had never really settled in until he'd come to Port Charles. Cody stated that having family and new acquaintances in the area made him happy he stayed in town. With tenderness, Cody stated that he wished to create new dreams. After exchanging warm looks, Sasha averted her gaze from Cody. To celebrate moving on to the next phase of their lives, they raised carrot sticks. Diane informed Robert at Cafe Cherry that she planned to get Alexis's legal license restored. Diane stated that Alexis' true calling would always be law, and she also mentioned that she had extended an offer for Alexis to work at her business. Once he defeated Alexis and Diane in court, Robert hinted that he would take them both out to a celebratory supper. Michael volunteered to assist Jason in getting out of town at the boathouse located on the Quartermain estate. Jason declined, claiming that he was under the influence of someone. Michael inquired as to Jason's plans. With a the only thing I can, Jason answered. Diane was back at Cafe Cherry, sulking when she got Jason's call. She mentioned that she had anticipated his call. Jason was requested to tell Diane all he need. Chase appointed several young children as honorary detectives at the Port Charles police station. Brooke Lynn soon followed. Brooke Lynn lost it over Lucy and the deception situation. Chase voiced his worries on Brooke Lynn's choice to rejoin deception. Brooke Lynn acknowledged that everyone was suffering as a result of her strategy to return the company to Maxie. When Diane showed in, she announced that one of her clients was willingly turning himself in to the police. At that moment, Chase, Brooke Lynn, and other people were watching as Jason came around a bend. Jason was formally placed under arrest by Chase. Diane persuaded Chase to let her speak with Jason prior to making the reservation. Chase later let Brooke Lynn know how angry he was about Dante's shooting and claimed that the shooter appeared to be a lot like Jason. 
Diane informed Jason that he would be facing serious accusations in the nearby interrogation room. Diane pondered whether there was any possibility that Jason would reveal to her the reason behind Dante's shooting incident. This, I can assure you. Jason remarked, I won't be in here for long. While Eric, Nichols' biological father, is unintentionally raising Jude, his own natural kid, with Sloane, who is aware that Jude is Nichols' child, but is using him as a means of holding on to Eric, Nicole believes her baby boy has passed away on days of our lives. To be honest, Nicole had attempted the similar ruse with Sydney, the biological daughter of Sami and E.J., which involved Nicole passing Sydney off as her own. And just a few years prior, Xander had replaced Brady and Kristen's surviving child with Sarah's deceased one. Obviously, Rachel turned out to be the ultimate brat, so Sarah truly got off lucky what she had to give Rachel back. A popular soap opera cliché, baby switches are nothing new on daytime television. These are a few of our top picks. Amelia Heinel's character Victoria recently found out that Eve Nicole, the baby she believed to have passed away soon after birth, was a fake. Her aunt Jordan, Colleen Zink, abducted her living daughter Claire, Haley Aaron, who was brought up to despise the Newman family. Jordan had no idea that growing up in that family had the same outcome. Over 30 years ago, Lauren, Tracy Bregman, experienced a similar situation. Sheila, Kimberlyn Brown, abducted her infant son, Scotty, and claimed him as her own child with Lauren's former partner, Scott, Peter Barton. Meanwhile, Sheila gave Lauren a baby named Dylan, who succumbed to meningitis before turning one year old. One life to live slash all my children slash general hospital. To pull off these two baby switches, it required two shows. First, Babe, Alexa Havens, wound up with Bianca's, Eden Regal, daughter, Miranda, as Bess, and Babe's son, AJ, left for Landview to be Kelly's, Heather Tom. Happy little boy, Ace. A few years later, while Jason Daniel Morgan was living in Landview as T's toddler, Victor, General Hospital Sam, Kelly Monaco, believed her son was dead. T immediately realized that little Vic wasn't hers when he was given a thalassemia diagnosis, a condition that primarily affects Mediterranean families like the Cassidines. Hello, is that still with Danny? Or is it one of those transient birth defects for which GH is well known? However, baby switches are very popular on GH. The actress Laura, Jenny Francis, was a swapped baby herself. Her first 12 or so years of life were spent as Laura Vining. However, after discovering that her previously declared stillborn child was actually alive, Leslie, Denise Alexander, her mother, went to the Vinings and demanded her daughter's return. A troubled Laura joined a cult, fled her house, and ultimately made the decision that she wanted to live with Leslie. Furthermore, the original Vining parents were never mentioned again, with the exception of Amy Shell Kepler, Laura's old sister, who appeared and was essentially adopted by Laura's new parents, Leslie and Rick, Chris Robinson. Adolescent Gwen, Jennifer Landon, decided to give Craig, Hunt Block, and Rosanna, Katie McLean, her unborn child for adoption, pregnant with Craig's child. Jennifer, Jennifer Farron, was resolved to keep Craig away from his child at all costs. Billy was born sick to Gwen. Johnny was born healthy to Jennifer. Craig made a small prank call. After all was said and done, Craig had no son at all. The baby swap stories gained popularity on Bold and the Beautiful when Wayne Brady's character, Dr. Reese Buckingham, struck a bargain that completely appended everyone's lives. When Hope, Annika Noel, gave birth on Catalina Island by herself at the same moment as another lady gave birth to a dead baby. He committed a crime of opportunity. In order to give young Kelly a sister, Dr. Buckingham switched the babies and sold Hope and Lambs, Scott Clifton, healthy daughter to Taylor, who was Hunter Tylo at the time, and Steffi, Jacqueline Massinswood. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.